Welcome back, Zero K fans and analysts of Don. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have another match. It's going to be Ultra Godzilla versus Doctor Doom on Thornford. And Ultra Godzilla going for Hovercraft. Doctor Doom going for Hovercraft. So apparently, Hovercraft is still the way to go. Well, it was worth checking. Anyway, let's see if they actually do anything different. Because, I mean, you know, Hovercraft, they've, it's got more than a handful of. Okay, it's the factory with the fewest units in the game, or fewest unit types in the game. So it's not got a whole lot of variety. But, I mean, maybe they discover something about maces, I don't know. It's possible, I suppose. But yeah, this map, if you ever get the chance to play on it, is a very reclaim-heavy map. So make sure to get all the reclaim, especially the these forts in the center, or the walls. All these walls are worth plenty of metal. So, yeah, pick them up, get the metal. It's very effective for starting out your economy. I mean, Doctor Doom had a caretaker here just to be on the safe side. But yeah, caretakers, constructors, doesn't really matter what you use. Just reclaim those walls. So, starting out, though, obviously there's not going to be a whole lot of aggression, just because this is a very reclaim-focused map. So, all the players just coming in here, setting this up. Also, small tip, there is a setting you can do. I'm not sure where it is in simple settings, but you can set it up so you are prioritizing reclaiming the metal, not energy. Not a huge deal on this map, but it is worth noting. Doctor Doom did grab a little bit of energy early on. They actually do kind of need, to be perfectly honest. Not the worst idea in the world, but still, yeah. Sometimes you don't want to take the energy. Basically, it's like if you have energy and metal in a group of reclaimables, it'll only get the metal. But that's the settings. Defaults. Defaults to reclaims everything. Although, I should point out, Ultra Godzilla is expanding quite heavily, getting a lot of metal, or a lot of wind generators as well, making sure they have the power they need, because you need energy, of course, to use the metal you have. And Ultra Godzilla just using that, setting up a lot of metal extractors, expanding a little bit slower, actually, it turns out, than their opponents, but getting a much safer energy infrastructure in the process, because Doctor Doom right now is relying entirely on energy reclaim. Ultra Godzilla, on the other hand, they have some energy reclaim, but primarily relying on the wind generators. Which is great. I mean, it's a really safe position for them to be in. Not to mention, Ultra Godzilla is winning out most of the early fights. So a good raid, actually, a good harassment right here is not going to happen because there are too many Lotuses built up and the commander in the main base is going to defend everything way too well. But, hey, a little bit of scouting can't hurt. Ooh, a little bit of scouting and a bit of destruction of their opponent's radar. That is really going to help. Unfortunately, the dagger will not be able to get four shots off on any of these metal extractors before the mace kills them. So it's a little bit SOL when it comes to actually doing any real damage. But hey, scouting is still valuable. Get that information, know where you can deal the damage, and then work from there. Although to be fair, the mace is not coming around the back. Instead, the commander is just being relied on, so this... Ah, the dagger doesn't quite manage to get rid of a metal extractor. No harassment for Ultra Godzilla, just a little bit of information. No real damage dealt. But at the same time, Ultra Godzilla has been expanding around the map, so not in vain. Ultra Godzilla still head economically. They still have a strong static economy, let alone the reclaim. And their production is fine. Could use another caretaker, but otherwise it's fine. Not sure what this quill probably means to be helping out the factory, but isn't actually doing so. Might want to change that up. Might want to get that quill actually helping out the factory. Would help. Still, though, Ultra Godzilla is at least ahead in terms of production, in terms of reclaim. As the caretaker for Doctor Doom is continuously trying to get the energy so that it can actually get in and deal some damage. But Doctor Doom will have a fusion plant soon enough, so... Ultra Godzilla will lose their little bit of an advantage quickly. But again, Ultra Godzilla's main advantage right now is just a stronger, more robust metal economy. Their energy economy is good. Their metal economy is great. They can actually reclaim as needed, especially useful right now as Ultra Godzilla's commander getting into a position to reclaim this entire fort over in the southwest side of the map, because it's worth noting, this map does have potential for starting over in these corners as well. Like, it is built to allow for people to start in all the corners at once. And Ultra Godzilla and Doctor Doom both managing to get the corners to get respective sides, but it looks like Ultra Godzilla is going to be able to take out what Doctor Doom has built up. Yeah, this scalpel's coming in here. They'll take out the lotuses, take out the quills before they're able to get done. This No, they're not going for it! Ultra Godzilla is seeding the northeast. This is totally doable. Unfortunately, the damage scalpel going in first, not what you want. Kind of an important mi micro tip. 
if you have multiple units in a group and one of them is heavily damaged and the other one isn't, make sure to leave with the undamaged unit because everything will target the undamaged unit. Your opponent's not going to change the focus in the middle of that to target the more damaged unit just to be more efficient, generally speaking. I mean, at really a high level, they might, but that's not a thing you see very often. So yeah, lead with the undamaged unit, then you get a lot more firepower overall. Still, though, Ultra Godzilla does indeed take the Northeast, did not ultimately cede it, and there's the reclaim. They've got it set up. They've got a really strong position to work with it. They have enough in terms of build power that they can actually take full advantage of the situation. And they also have the energy income. Unfortunately, this maze providing a little bit of trouble over to the back side of the map, which is actually going to get rid of one of these quills that's helping with the energy production. Scalpels are coming around to deal with it, but of course, scalpels do not just outright beat maces. It's very much a matter of positioning, and the time it takes for the scalpel to turn around, the mace will be able to take or will be able to damage that scalpel and take it out completely. Maces, like I said before, they do kind of keep pace with scalpels. I think it's a, I think the difference is a few elmos per second, 66 to 62. Yes, yeah, scalpels. Oh, no, scalpels are slightly slower than maces. That's the problem. Yeah, maces outrun scalpels. Worth noting. Very important thing to bear in mind. So, gotta make sure that you're not putting out too much in the way of forward movement, movement because those scalpels, those scalpels really require their range. Otherwise, they die. Actually, what's the, the range difference isn't that big either. Oops. 345 to 440. Like 440 in favor of the scalpel. But 100 elmos range, when there's a 4 elmo per second advantage on the, ma on the mace... Yeah, the scalpels, they got 25 seconds in the ideal conditions, and that's rarely the case because turning radius is a thing. So yeah, Ultra Godzilla actually kind of having a bit of a tough time. They're trying to move forward, but Doctor Doom, they finally get their economy set up about as robustly as Ultra Godzilla's, and they got a nice gunship plant to boot. Ultra Godzilla has no way of dealing with the air and is kind of having a hard time maintaining their ground presence. Able to rebuild a little bit where they lost their metal extractors, but still, Ultra Godzilla not that far ahead economically. And that's with the reclaim, though admittedly not a huge amount of it. The reclaim over to the southwest has been largely taken. A little bit's left, but not much, 90 metal worth. For the northeast, it's still being taken. But the question is whether that's going to matter too much. Daggers coming in here, scouting out more than anything else, not really finding a whole lot of things they can destroy, not managing to get the caretaker taken out, which... Would have been a great thing to destroy. I mean, the picket wouldn't have stopped them. Caretaker being gone would have meant, well, nothing building up that quickly. Doctor Doom would have just accessed out. But that's not happening. Instead, Ultra Godzilla does get a bit of scouting him, but doesn't get a whole lot of damage. Same time, though, they do have a back of force coming in of scalpels that should be able to take out a lot of the, the quills here building up. They target those quills. They should be able to get rid of... Nope, none of them. The picket will be up in time. But enough scalpels... That'll be fine. Ultra Godzilla should be able to sweep away this entire western side of the map. Opening up quite a lot and putting Dr. Doom in an awkward position. Forcing them to really attack with these locusts because what else do they have? Now, that being said, the locusts will be, will be able to take out the eastern side of the map. So this is not going to be an uneven trade. But the question just becomes what's going to happen with these forces incoming? How about how even the trade's going to be? And in fact... Ultra Godzilla losing out of the trade thanks to the daggers coming in as backup. Mace helping out a fair bit, but it's almost not enough. Sca One of the scalpels does survive. The other two were destroyed. But at the same time, the eastern expansion was wiped out. Flail coming in try to at least even the score alongside some swifts. But that may not be relevant. I mean, swifts are certainly trying. But it's just hard to actually hold on because there's only one swift against all these locusts. As the locusts are dragging the swift back into a vulnerable position and tearing it apart there is like, that is just more indicative of how much ultra godzilla is behind is the locusts those locusts are air control those locusts mean ultra godzilla can't really be safe anywhere and one swift is not going to do the trick on the other hand though ultra godzilla does have the south side of the map at least in terms of having the metal extractors Getting a little bit of damage in the back lines, but it's still not enough. Though I like this. This is a cheeky little picket here. Would be able to take out the Metal Extractors if it wasn't scouted, but having been scouted, it won't be able to do all that much. So when you bring that all together, Ultra Godzilla is relying entirely on being sneaky. Doctor Doom 
just has locusts they can spend around the map anywhere. And not a whole lot's going to stop them. Though, admittedly, a hacksaw has been built up. That that should stop them. I mean, if they go straight for the hacksaw, maybe. But, I don't know. Between the hacksaw and lotus is not going to work out. Yeah, the lotus is pushing the locusts back. And, at the very least, Doctor Doom not able to wipe out the expansion. Ultra Godzilla saving the day. At the cost of quite a lot of defenses, mind you. But, still, able to save the day. If they can get some reclaim or rebuild over here with these metal extractors, it will help. But clearly the reclaim is the priority. And again, there are still reclaimable castles. Like this castle right here. Still grab that. That can still become reclaim. So there are still assets around the map that have not been taken. Not to mention a bunch of the stuff over here in the corner, but that's really more inside of Doctor Doom's territory. Like, Ultra Godzilla can try, but they're not going to be able to do much. The flail going way too far forward. Ultra Godzilla, what are you doing letting the flail get out of position from the mace? I mean, at least the mace is able to help out a little bit, but that flail uh, leading to a combat that really Ultra Godzilla did not want to take. I don't know what... What is Ultra Godzilla doing? Is there a rally point set there or something? Because that's the only thing I can think of. Oh, there is. Okay, that explains it, actually, yeah. There's a rally point set there, then... Even then, though, it still feels like it's very far forward. Ultra Godzilla is spreading their army extremely thin, and Doctor Doom, all they have to do is wait for an opportune position to come in and just tear it apart. Unfortunately, Doctor Doom's still behind economically, so they have to find a way of turning any of those attacks into follow-up that is able to take out some metal extractors and possibly claim some of their own. Which is exactly what they're trying to do over to the northeast side of the map. Now, how, well, how effective that'll be remains to be seen, but... Hey, the quill's there. Nothing's really stopping it. The flail can't stop it. Raven's gonna try. It does take out the quill mine. So that's... It's still a bit of a problem. The backup quill is nowhere to be found. I am a little surprised, actually. Why are there no backup quills? In fact, there are no... Oh, all the quills are down here. Okay. Still, though, that's a good time for a backup quill, Dr. Doom. And actually, at this point, it may be a bit of a problem. The locusts... Trying to help out, but the flails aren't the only problem. Maces get rid of locusts without issue. Doctor Doom's commander being heavily assaulted there, and Ultra Godzilla, having taken out Doctor Doom's commander, has basically no threats to worry about anymore. Doctor Doom, they have lost the ability to build in the front lines, realizing there's not a whole lot they can do to prevent the final attacks from coming in. Ultra Godzilla takes the game. Doctor Doom throws in the towel, and ultimately was kind of in the back foot. Now that I think about it, this entire game. Little hard to tell, but yeah, it's pretty clear at this point that Doctor Doom... I mean, obviously, as Ultra Godzilla has won, this point is the point where Ultra Godzilla just takes the game and go, runs away with it. But even earlier, Doctor Doom wasn't able to hold on to the Northeast while Ultra Godzilla took the Southwest and kept it. And Doctor Doom wasn't really able... didn't really prioritize taking the Northeast. Like, taking it back or getting rid of what Ultra Godzilla had for the reclaim. Doctor Doom kind of took it near the end, but didn't manage to actually do much. They went for taking it, I should say. They didn't even take it. They just brought a quill over there. Didn't even have two or three, just in case the first one got bombed. And then lost it. Because it got bombed. So yeah, that was... I was that. That was what happens in that kind of situation. So yeah, that is, I think, a good place to end it off. I'm a little... Well, hmm. Now nah, I'll do one more. All right, it's actually going to be a bit of a different one, but I'm curious how it goes. I'm going to do a four v four for the last one, and it's going to be on Tabula, because I want to. I I want to test a theory. I have, I have a hypothesis in my head that four v four is about the largest size of game in zero K, where there is like distinctness between or distinctness between players in terms of roles and what players can do or what players are needed to do. So I think 4v4 is about the largest size of game where there is a coherent game that doesn't seem like players are redundant or doesn't seem like players are kind of not sure what to do. That's largely a function of map size more than anything, but also kind of a function of the way that the factories work out in the game and the different roles factories can play. So let's track out a 4v4. See if my hypothesis can at least hold some water. I mean, obviously, it's just one data point, so, you know, can't make conclusions, but it'd be kind of cool to see what happens. So, we'll have that in a few minutes. Stay tuned.